Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries, John 8, 12. You know the deal. This is going to be uh, Book of Enoch. And just a quick update. I was trying to load a video to Gab, and it won't finish processing. So I don't know if it's a quirk or, or what. But... Uh, I've got to have one of the largest channels on Gab. I'm approaching a thousand videos. I think it's 990 right now. But uh, I'm not doing too much with uh, Tube since uh, I'm afraid to post much of anything new on Tube. I don't think they'll bother with the Book of Enoch, but yeah. All right, so Book of Enoch chapter 20 and let's read and these are the names of the holy angels now remember if there's holy angels there's unholy angels a third of the angels fell with uh, the devil or well became the with the devil, yeah. And these are the names of the holy angels who watch. Uriel, one of the holy angels, who is over the world and over Tartarus. Now the word Tartarus is uh, from the Greek and it is translated as hell. It appears one time in the Bible, if I remember correctly, and it is the deepest abyss of hell where the fallen angels are, according to, yeah, let me look it up. If memory serves me correctly, it's, uh, I don't want to look it up, but it's, I believe it's 2 Peter 2 and verse 4. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell. See, there wasn't, hell was created for the uh, devil and his angels. Uh, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to, to be reserved unto judgment. If I remember correctly, that, is, that cast down to hell uh, in the Greek is Tartarus. So, Let's see. And Matthew 25, 41. Then shall he say unto them on the left hand. Now he says the people on the right hand, the sheep are going into eternal life, but the people, but the goats on the left hand. Okay. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. See, originally there was no there was no hell originally. It wasn't until Satan and his angels fell that the Lord created hell. So, all right, let's see. All right, let's start verse chapter 20. And these are the names of the holy angels who watch. Uriel, one of the holy angels, who is over the world and over Tartarus. Raphael, one of the holy angels, who is over the spirits of men. Raguel, one of the holy angels, who takes vengeance on the world of the luminaries. I wonder if that's the Illuminati. Michael, one of the holy angels, to wit, he that is set over the best part of mankind and over chaos. Sarah Quail, one of the holy angels who was set over the spirits, who sin in the spirit. Gabriel, one of the holy angels who is over paradise and the serpents and the cherubim. Remiel, one of the holy angels whom God set over those who rise. And I'm guessing when they say those who rise, uh, the resurrection. Out of all these names, there's only two, 
two that are mentioned in the Bible, Michael and Gabriel. Gabriel seems to be the one that announces things to Israel. It was uh, Gabriel that uh, appeared to Mary. So keep that in mind. And Gabriel appeared in Luke chapter 1 to the father, Zechariah, who, um, of John the Baptist. You know, he, uh, yeah, so there you go. Gabriel also appeared to Daniel in chapter 9. And uh, Daniel chapter 8 and 9. And then in uh, Luke one twenty six, uh, yeah, let's see. Gabriel's only mentioned four times in the Bible. Luke 1, Daniel 8 and 9, and uh, that's it. Those, uh, those three chapters. And Michael is mentioned, I think, in Revelation 12. So we'll take a look at that real quick. New Testament only. Yeah, Michael only appears uh, twice. He appears in the book of Jude and in Revelation 12. It says, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels. And prevailed not, neither was her place found any more in heaven. So the dragon and his angels were weren't found any more in heaven because they were uh they were kicked out. Uh let's see. All right, let's go to Enoch chapter twenty one. And I proceeded to where things were chaotic. Sounds like uh, things today, right? And I saw there something horrible. I, I saw neither a heaven above nor a firmly founded earth. All right, well, if it's not heaven and if it's not earth, what is it? But a place chaotic and horrible. And there I saw seven stars of the heaven bound together in it like great mountains and burning with fire. Where do we read about seven stars? Where do we read about seven stars? Well, Revelation uh, chapter 1 and verse 20. Jesus, the mystery of the seven stars, which thou sawest in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. Hmm. Revelation 21, verse 9. And there came unto me one of the seven angels which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues and talked with me saying, Come hither and I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. You know, there are Certain numbers that pop up in Scripture a lot. And seven's one of them. So, and then in Revelation 8, verse 6, And the seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. And boy, I'll tell you what, when that happens, the earth is not going to be very happy. Revelation 15.1, And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of God. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, there's a lot of sevens in the Bible. A lot. So, yeah, you'll see a pattern. All right, let's... Uh, 
Well, let's start up from the beginning. 21, and I proceeded to where things were chaotic, and I saw there something horrible. I saw neither a heaven above nor a firmly founded earth, but a place chaotic and horrible. And there I saw seven stars of the heaven bound together in it like great mountains and burning with fire. Sounds like hell, right? Then I said, for what sin are they bound, and on what account have they been cast in hither? Then said Uriel, one of the holy angels who was with me and was chief over them, and said, Enoch, why dost thou ask, and why art thou eager for the truth? These are of the number of the stars of heaven, which have transgressed the commandment of the Lord, and are bound here till ten thousand years. The time entailed by their sins are consummated, and from thence I went to another place, which was still more horrible than the former, and I saw a horrible thing, a great fire there which burnt and blazed, and the place was cleft as far as the abyss, being full of great descending columns of fire. Neither its extent nor magnitude could I see, nor could I conjecture. Then I said, How fearful is the place, and how terrible to look upon! Then Uriel answered me, one of the holy angels who was with me, and said unto me, Enoch, why hast thou such fear and affright? And I answered, Because of this fearful place, and because of the spectacle of the pain. And he said unto me, This place is the prison of the angels, and here they will be imprisoned forever. Hmm. All right, let's go to chapter 22. And thence I went to another place, and he, mountain and of hard rock, and there was in it four hollow places, deep and wide and very smooth, how smooth are the hollow places and deep and dark to look at. Then Raphael answered one of the holy angels who was with me and said unto me, These hollow places, these hollow places have been created for this very purpose, that the spirits of the souls of the dead should assemble therein, yea, that all the souls of the children of men should assemble here, and these places have been made to receive them till the day of their judgment, and till their appointed period, till the period appointed, till the great judgment comes upon them. I saw the spirit of a dead man making suit, and his voice went forth to heaven and made suit. Uh, if you're wondering what a suit is, you ever heard of a lawsuit? You know, it's making a suit is... A petition you know you're asking the Lord it's asking for something to the Lord for uh, in prayer and his voice went forth to heaven and made suit and I asked Raphael the angel who was with me and I said unto him this spirit which make a suit who whose is it whose voice goeth, goeth forth and maketh suit to heaven this is interesting. And he answered me saying, This is the spirit which went forth from Abel, Abel, whom his brother Cain slew, and he makes a suit against him till his seed, his seed is destroyed from the face of the earth. And his seed is annihilated from amongst the seed of men. Ah, another point I'm going to make. Then I asked regarding it, and regarding all the hollow places, why is one separated from the other? And he answered me and said unto me, These three have been made that the spirits of the dead might be separated, and such a division has been made for the spirits of the righteous, in which there is the bright spring of water, and such has been made for sinners when they died and are buried in the earth, and judgment has not been executed on them in their lifetime, here their spirits shall be set apart in this great pain till the great day of judgment and punishment and torment of those who curse forever 
and and retribution for their spirits. There he shall bind them forever, and such a division has been made for the spirits of, of those who make their suit, who make disclosures concerning their destruction when they were slain in the days of the sinners. Such has been made for the spirits of men who were not righteous but sinners, who were complete in transgression, and of the transgressors, transgressors, they shall be companions, but their spirits shall not be slain in the day of judgment, nor shall they be raised from thence. Then I blessed the Lord of glory and said, Blessed be my Lord, the Lord of righteousness, who ruleth forever. Boy, there's a some stuff to look at here. All right, let's go back. Uh, talk about the hollow places where there is the dead. Oh boy, this I could spend an hour or two just on this one chapter. I've already covered a lot of this material. There's a Bible study I did called Three Days That Changed the World. When Jesus died, he was in the grave, the earth, for three days and three nights. Doing what? He was preaching unto all the Old Testament saints that died. Do you realize all the Old Testament saints went to hell waiting for the uh, Messiah? Yeah, they did. I did an entire Bible study on this. But there's two compartments, at least two compartments in hell. Actually, there's three. There's the one for the fallen angels, the deep of abyss of hell, Tartarus. And then there's a compartment called Abraham's bosom. And then there's the, when you read about the story of the rich man and Lazarus, where the rich man went, the flames. So let's take a look at that. Luke chapter 16, verse 19. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. Purple's royalty. I mean, purple has always been royalty. And uh, if a commoner was caught wearing purple in Europe, in certain kingdoms, uh, it was a offense to put somebody to death so purple's always been a uh, royal clothing he wore fine linen he wore nice comfortable soft clothes and when it says he fared sumptuously every day it means he ate well he didn't eat gruel or porridge he ate good stuff verse 20 so this guy's royalty dressed nicely and he eats very well. The rich man. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus. Verse 20. Luke 16, 20. Uh, which was laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels. Did you know that's one of the angels' jobs to carry people? Oh, yeah. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. Now, remember, Abraham was called God's friend. The rich man also, was di also died and was buried. And in hell, and in hell, the rich man, and in hell, he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeing Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. Hmm. And he, the rich man, cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. See, this rich man was a, was a child of Abraham. He says, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he might dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, 
Remember that thou in thy lifetime receiveth thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. See, Abraham and Lazarus are, they're not in the flames. They're in Abraham's bosom. But they're both in hell. See, there's at least two different compartments of hell. Three if you count the angels. Deep, you know, deepest abyss, right? So, but now he, Lazarus, is comforted, and thou art tormented. Verse 26. And besides all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed. So there's a big valley or something, right? There's a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us, that would come from thence. So we, you know, we can't come to you and you can't come to us. And obviously, if the rich man could, he would cross over and go to Abraham's bosom so he's not in the flames, right? I mean, that's pretty self-explanatory. Then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou wouldst send them to my father's house. So the rich man wants Lazarus to go to his father's house. For I have five brethren that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Yeah, send them so they'll warn my, my brothers. Abraham saith unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. See, even the rich man knew repent was very important. Very important. And he, Abraham, said unto him, if they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded through, through one rose from the dead. So, you got Abraham's bosom and hell. I guess you could say smoking and non-smoking section, right? The flames. Yeah. But you got to realize, this is Old Testament. This is the Old Testament. Christ went to hell for three days and three nights, preached unto the spirits, and then took them to heaven with him, where they're awaiting their resurrected bodies. But that is an entirely... I've done, I've done Bible studies on all, all these subjects, all this stuff. I'm not sure I could always find it, but, I, you know, if anybody's interested and sends me an email, you know, uh, if anybody wants to send me an email, Chaplain Bob C H A P L A I N B O B at protonmail.com, P R O T O N M A I L dot com, or Palm, like a palm tree, Palm Beach Weddings with an S, weddings, plural, at gmail.com. So, all right, what else? Now, remember where it said that uh, it said uh, Abel was uh, making suit? Let's see. It says, This is the spirit which went forth from Abel, whom his brother Cain slew, and he makes a suit against him till his seed, his children, is destroyed from the face of the earth, and his seed is annihilated from amongst the seed of men. Hmm. Why would all Cain's children be destroyed for the sin of one person? Well, we'll get back to that. So, let's go read Genesis 4, verse 8. And Cain talked with Abel his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and slew him. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? Yeah, Lord, it's not. It, well, I don't think it was my day to watch him. Verse 10. And he, the Lord, said, What hast thou done? 
the voice, listen to this, the voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. Isn't that just what we pretty much read in Enoch? It says, you know, Cain, uh, Abel's making suit against Cain. And that, uh, yeah, we're going to go back and read that. And now art thou cursed from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. And Cain said unto the Lord, Oy vey, my punishment is greater than I can bear. Yeah. Uh, what group of people are fugitives and vagabonds upon the earth? And when they, they, when they till the ground, uh, the earth doesn't yield under her, her their strength you know they plant something but it doesn't it doesn't fruit there's no harvest is there a group of people that meets that description uh if you can figure that one out you'll know who the children of cain are now let's go back to the book of enoch This, let's see, uh, verse 7. This is a spirit which went forth from Abel, whom his brother Cain slew, and he makes a suit against him till his seed, his children, his seed is destroyed from the face of the earth, and his seed is annihilated from amongst the seed of men. Let me tell you something. The greatest Bible scholars that I know, well, let's take a look at something. In 1 John 3.12, we read the following. Not as Cain, who was of, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil, and his brother is righteous. Who's the wicked one? Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one. Hmm. You know, the word of, I mean, cakes are made of flour, sugar, eggs, milk, you know, they're not like flour. They don't follow and go after flour. They are flour. They're made of flour. Not as Cain who was of that wicked one. Uh, there's a lot of people who tell you, oh, well, Cain was fathered by Adam. Well, if that was true, that means Adam's the wicked one, right? Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one. Hmm. Makes you wonder. All right, let's go to the eighth chapter of John. Uh, let's see. Verse 31. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. See, there were Jews that believed on him, and then there's Jews that don't believe on him. And he says... Jesus speaking, if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Uh, what, you guys were never in bondage in Egypt? Well, maybe not if they were uh, of Esau. Israel went into bondage in Egypt. But they're saying, well, we were never in bondage to any man. Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin, Whosoever committeth, committeth sin is the servant of sin. 
and the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth ever. If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me, because my word hath no place in you. you got to realize something. Now, i got an entire playlist on what happened in Genesis 6. The fallen angels and um, the giants... And then after the flood, the Canaanites. And if that's one doctrine, the churches fight tooth and nail more than anything. They do not want you to know that the fallen angels had satanic seed on this earth. And I don't need the book of Enoch to prove that. I, matter of fact, I, my entire Genesis 6 series, I never used the book of Enoch to prove that. Never. I use the Bible alone. Genesis 6, Job 38. And guess what? Abraham had Isaac, and Isaac had two kids, Jacob and Esau. Esau married a Canaanite, two of them, actually, two Hittites. He married two of them. He also married an Arab, a daughter of Ishmael. Do you know the word Arab means mixed? Yeah. Yeah, mixed. I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me, because my word hath no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and, you do, and ye do that which ye have seen with your father. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus saith unto them, If ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. But now ye seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. Ye do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, We be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, ye would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God, neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do ye not understand my speech, even because ye cannot hear my word? Jesus is telling them, you, don't, you can't understand me because you cannot hear my word. John 8, 44. Ye are of, there's that word of again, ye are of your father the devil. Now, you got, th basically you got three choices here when Jesus is telling them they're of their father the devil. Um, he's calling them names. You're of your father, the devil. Nah, 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 nah. Or it's a figure of speech. You know, like a guy goes to the, the beach and there's a good looking girl there with a bikini. He says, wow. You know, his buddy talks to his buddy. Wow. Look at that girl over there in the red bikini. Isn't she a fox? Uh, you know. Is she a four-legged creature with a tail? No, she's a two-legged creature with a tail, but uh, no, she doesn't have fur and a snout. And No. No. It's, you know, so it's either he's calling them names, it's a figure of speech, or he's telling them the truth. So let's keep reading this. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father will ye do. He was a murderer from the beginning. Huh, who was the murderer from the beginning? Uh, Cain. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth, 
because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Who's the first liar in the Bible? Genesis 3, the devil, the serpent. So here it is. You know, Jesus is saying, you're of your father, the devil. Verse 46. I'm sorry, verse 45. And because I tell you the truth. Oh, wait a minute. Is Jesus calling them names? Is this a figure of speech? Or is he telling them the truth? You're of your father, the devil. And because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. You know what, people? Let me tell you something. When you realize in Genesis 6 that the fallen angels impregnated the women, humans, women, and had children who were giants with six fingers and six toes, it really isn't a stretch to feel, to believe the same thing happened in Genesis 3. You know, the greatest Bible scholars that I know believe that Cain was fathered by the devil. And if these people didn't know so much about the Bible, I could prob possibly dismiss it. But I'm telling you, when you look at the whole thing, it's not that far-fetched. It really isn't. But boy, they sure don't want you to know that. Mm-mm-mm-mm. You know, the, in, in Ezra 9, when the Israelites married into the Canaanite line, you know what God said to do? Separate yourselves from your wives and your, your heathen wives and your heathen children. Separate yourselves. Divorce them. Cast them out. That doesn't sound very Christ-like, does it? No. No, it sure don't. So, you know, why would it say in uh, Enoch 22, verse 7, And he answered me, saying, This is the spirit which went forth from Abel, whom his brother Cain slew, and he makes a suit against him till his seed is destroyed. Whose seed? Cain's seed is destroyed from the face of the earth, and his seed is annihilated from amongst the seed of men. Huh. You know, the more I've been reading this book of Enoch, the more I think it, it lines, you know, it lines up with the Bible more than I thought it did. It really does. You know, but hey, that's just one guy's opinion. Of course, I haven't read this in oh over over 25 years. I mean, it was probably 1990 or 91 last time I read this. So, you know, it's been a long time. All right, 23. From thence, I went to another place to the west of the ends of the earth, and I saw a burning fire which ran without resting and paused not from its course day or night, but ran regularly. And I asked, saying, what is this which rests not? Then Raguel, one of the holy angels who was with me, answered me and said unto me, This course of fire which thou hast seen is the fire in the west which persecutes all the luminaries of heaven. Don't ask me. I have no idea. 24. And from thence I went to another place of the earth, and he showed me a mountain range of fire, which burnt day and night, and I went beyond it and saw seven magnificent mountains, all differing each from the other, and the stones thereof were magnificent and beautiful, magnificent as a whole, of glorious appearance and fair exterior. Three towards the east, one founded 
on the other, three towards the south, one upon the other, and the rough, deep, rough ravines, no one of which joined with any other. And the seventh mountain was in the midst of these, and it excelled them in height, resembling the seat of a throne, and fragrant trees encircled the throne. And amongst them was a tree, such as I had never yet smelt, neither was any amongst them, nor were others like it. It had a fragrance beyond all fragrance, and its leaves and blooms and wood wither not forever. And its fruit is beautiful, and its fruit resembles the dates of a palm. Then I said, How beautiful is this tree, and fragrant, and its leaves are fair, and its blooms very delightful in appearance. Then answered Michael, one of the holy and honored angels, who was with me and was their leader, Chapter 25. And he said unto me, Enoch, why dost thou ask me regarding the fragrance of the tree? And why dost thou wish to learn the truth? Then I answered him, saying, I wish to know about everything, but especially about this tree. And he answered, saying, This high mountain which thou hast seen, whose summit is like the throne of God, is his throne, where the holy great one the Lord of glory, the eternal King, will sit when he shall come down to visit the earth with goodness. And as for this fragrant tree, no mortal is permitted to touch it till the great judgment when he shall take vengeance on all and bring everything to its consummation forever. It shall then be given to the righteous and holy. Its fruit shall be for food to the elect its fruit shall be for food to the elect. It shall be transplanted, transplanted to the holy place, to the temple of the Lord, the eternal King. Where do we read about this? Well, I'll tell you what, I could read the entire Genesis chapter 6 here, and uh, maybe I should. I don't know. Let's take a look. All right, in Genesis chapter 2, uh, verse 16, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. All right, so let's go to Genesis chapter 3, uh, verse 1. All right, Genesis 3, verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Now who is this serpent? Well, in Revelation 12, 9, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, that old serpent. Why old serpent? Because he'd been around for a long, long time. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Revelation 20, verse 2, And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Okay. All right, let's go back to Genesis 3. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made, and he, the serpent, said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Now this is a figure of speech. The Bible is full of figures of speech. Sometimes the Bible's literal, sometimes it's figuratively. Knowing which is which is a very important thing. When uh, Jesus came to John the Baptist in Jordan when he was baptizing, John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Was Jesus a four-legged uh, creature with wool and said, bah. No. 
No, it's figure of speech. Serpent here is the devil and Satan. I mean, unless, of course, you don't want any talking snakes. I don't. But, hey, um, then again, you know, I'm not a Baptist preacher, right? Verse 2, And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Oh, there's that talking snake again. Ye shall not surely die. See, first things out of the serpent's mouth, the devil and Satan, uh, the father of lies, you know, lies. Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Oh, yeah. Now, the Bible, like in Ezekiel 31, it talks about trees, figure of speech, being family trees. Is this tree of good and evil? Is this a figure of speech? Is this representative of Satan himself? Could be. The tree of life in the book of Revelation, is that figuratively of Christ? Could be. You know, I'm not exactly, I'm not 100% sure. I mean, there's a lot of things in the Bible uh, with question marks. Verse 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, you know, the Bible talks about, uh, uh, you know, I, sometimes wisdom and knowledge is compared to food. I think that's in the book of Proverbs. I'm not sure. The tree was good for food, and that was pleasant to the eyes. Oh, yeah, the tree was pleasant to the eyes. And a tree to be desired, to make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof, the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Hmm. So, what was the sin? Uh, I'm not sure, but let's take a look. Uh, what does it mean to eat? Uh, well, let's use the Bible to explain the Bible. Proverbs 30 and verse 20. Such is the way of an adulterous woman. An adulterous woman. She's a cheater. She cheats on her husband. Such is the way of an adulterous woman. She eateth and wipeth her mouth and saith, I have done no wickedness. Hmm. In the English language, does eating have a sexual connotation? Well, I'll tell you what, if a guy went to a prostitute with a handful of $100 bills and told her he wanted her to eat, I strongly believe that she would understand exactly what it is he was asking for. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I totally believe that. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. A lot of figurative uh, figures of speech there. In the eyes of them both were opened and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Why figs? Why fig leaves? Do you know the fig tree is the symbol of Judah in the Bible? Oh, yeah. Verse 8. 
And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. Read Ezekiel 31. The Assyrian was a tree in the Garden of Eden. Family trees. Yeah, I have an entire Bible study on that. It's really interesting. And this is not new stuff. A hundred years ago, this stuff that I'm teaching was common knowledge among churches. It's only been the last, oh, I don't know, since, uh, since the uh, Federal Reserve Act. And the you-know-whos took over the, um, the bankings and uh, bought up all the publishing companies. And, you know, there's all the publishers are in the hands of the enemy. Verse 9. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? Hey, Adam, where are you? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. What? Okay. If they ate from a tree, why are they, why are they naked? I, I don't get it. You know, does that make any sense to anybody? And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree, whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, it's the woman's fault. She did it. And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, It's the devil's fault. The serpent, he did it. It's his fault. And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. Do you know what that word beguiled means? If you can find an old, old, old dictionary... Beguiled means seduced. It could be spiritually. It could also mean sexually seduced. The modern dictionaries don't reflect that, but the old ones do. I had an old dictionary. Sadly, somebody else has it now. Oh, well, hope they need it more than I do. Verse 14, And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed, cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shall be, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Listen to this. Genesis 3.15 And I will put enmity. Do you know what enmity is? Hatred, extreme hatred. The Lord is talking to the serpent, which is the devil and Satan. And I will put enmity between thee, the serpent, and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. You know, the word seed, when Abraham, uh, when God promised Abraham that his seed would be like the stars of heaven, and the sands on the seashore for children, seed means children a lot of times. Not always, but when you're talking about people having seed, you're not talking about Eve sprouting apples from her arms and then, you know, eating apples and the seeds fall out. No, we're talking about children. Listen to this. And I, the Lord, will put enmity, hatred, between thee, the serpent, and the woman, and between thy seed, the serpent's seed, and her seed, the woman's seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. So God is done talking to the serpent. Now he's going to talk to Eve. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and a toothache. What? No, that's not what it says. If Eve took a bite out of an apple, wouldn't he give her a toothache? No. 
Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. What does it mean, conception? Hatch out children, people. I will. What, what happens when a woman gives childbirth? Guys, ask, ask, ask your mom if you're not married and you don't have any children of your own. I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. Oh, wait a minute. If Eve ate an apple, why is he talking about sorrow and childbirth? Why? Does the punishment fit the crime? In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Who was Eve's desire to prior to her husband? Huh? Huh? And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree, of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Oh, yeah. All right, let's skip down. 18. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground, for out of it wast thou taken, and for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. And Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. Was Eve the mother of goldfish? Was she the mother of eagles? Uh, you know, when you see that word all, you better think in reference to what it really means. Paul writes that for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Did Jesus sin and come short of the glory of God? Book of Hebrews says he was at without sin. So does all mean, does all include Jesus? No. So all does not mean all. Keep that in mind. Verse 21. And unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God made coats of skins and clothed them. Why? Because they were naked. Why didn't the uh, Lord God make a mouth covering if they ate the forbidden fruit? And the Lord God said, Behold, a man has become as one of us to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life, the tree of life, and eat and live forever. Therefore, the Lord God sent him forth from the Garden of Eden to till, to till the ground from whence he was taken so he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword, which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. I hope I get one of those uh, flaming swords when the Lord returns and I'm found worthy to come with him. And uh, that I get a, a way to use that flaming sword. I can think of a lot of people in New York City that could use a flaming sword. Uh, yeah. So. Now. Chapter four. Now, this is where people get wrong ideas, if you ask me. And Adam knew Eve, his wife. Uh, he knew her carnally in a sexual way. And she conceived and bear Cain and said I have gotten a man from the Lord was Adam the Lord why would Eve say I've gotten a man from the Lord and she again bear his brother Abel now it seems to me from this language they were twins and Abel was a keeper of sheep but Cain was a tiller of the ground so you know the rest of the story. Um, 
if you if you knew if you looked at Kane's line nothing good ever comes from anything of Kane's line and if you think it's just because he was the first murderer well so be it but Cain's line was cursed from the beginning. So let's go to verse 25. Uh, Genesis 4, 25. And Adam knew his wife again, and she bare a son, and called his name Seth, for God said she hath appointed me another seed, another seed instead of Abel, whom Cain slew. And to Seth, to him also there was born a son, and he called his name Enos. Then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. Now, here's an interesting uh, verse Genesis 5 3. And Adam lived 130 years and begat a son in his own likeness why would the bible say in his own likeness was cain not in his own likeness and begat a son in his own likeness after his image and called his name seth very interesting all right let's go back to enoch enoch 25 uh let's see oh wait a minute i'm not done yet revelation 22 verse 1 and he showed me a pure river of water of life now, i got an entire playlist on water of life clear as crystal proceeding out of the throne of god and of the lamb in the midst of the street of it and on either side of the river was there the tree of life the tree of life. So you got a tree of good and evil and a tree of life, which bear 12 manners of fruits and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there were no more curse, but the throne of God and the lamb shall be in it and his servants shall serve him. And they shall see his face and his name shall be in their foreheads. Would you rather have God's name in your forehead or the mark of the beast? 666. Uh, tough choice, huh? Verse 5. And there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. And he said unto me, These sayings are faithful and true, and the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. Behold, I come quickly, Jesus speaking, Behold, I come quickly, blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. There's a group of people called preterists, and they'll tell you, well, you know, all this happened uh, almost, you know, like uh, almost 2,000 years ago. Because it says it must shortly come to pass or shortly be done. But in the book of Peter, uh, the Bible says that uh, day, uh, a, th a day with the Lord is as a thousand years and a thousand years is as a day. So are they talking about on our time schedule or the time schedule of the Lord? You know, shortly be coming to pass, you know... <sighs> If I borrow money from you on a Wednesday and I say, I'll pay you Friday when I get paid, that's shortly coming to pass, right? A couple days, two days, Thursday and Friday, boom, you got paid. I pay you back. Thank you. So, uh, yeah. You know, but uh, are they talking about from our perspective or God's perspective shortly coming to pass? Sheesh. You know, in this whole book, you know, preterists pretty much have to ignore the book of Revelation. 
I mean, they're, they, they, oh, Matthew 24, Mark 13. Oh, yeah, yeah, they'll, they'll, yeah, that's, you know. When did every eye see Jesus coming in the clouds? When did the new Jerusalem come down from heaven? Uh, well, you know, that's, that's figuratively. It's now in our heart. The new Jerusalem's in our heart. Uh, I don't think so. Let's see. All right. Uh, all right, verse 8. And I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel, which showed me these things. Then saith he unto me, See thou, do it, uh, do it not, for I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren the prophets, and of them which keep, which keep the sayings of this book, worship God. And he said unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still, and he which is filthy, let him be filthy still, and he that is righteous, let him be righteous still, and he that is holy, let him be holy still. Verse Jesus, verse 12, Jesus speaking. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. See, the Bible, New Testament, was written in Greek. But you got the Hebrew roots heretics, little, oh, it's the Aleph and the Tav. No, it doesn't say Aleph and Tav. The, the Hebrew alphabet. It says Alpha and Omega. You ever heard of Alpha Bet? The alphabet? That's where it comes from. Alpha Beta. The first two letters of the Greek. Jesus says, I am Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end. The first and the last. Blessed are they which that do his commandments. That they may have right to the tree of life. The tree of life. I think I did a Bible playlist series on the tree. Trees. Trees of life. I think so. Hey, give me a break. I've done over 1,400 or 500 Bible studies over the last eight, nine years. I can't even hardly remember all the ones I've done. So. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without, you know, outside, are dogs. You know what in the Bible call you know what dogs are called in the Bible? And I'm not talking about a four-legged creature that jumps up and down when you come home after you've been at work all day. No, no, no. Not that dog with the tail wagging. No, 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 no. The Bible calls sodomites dogs. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. Jesus is the morning star. The complete Jewish Bible and the NIV removes the word Lucifer in Isaiah 14 and inserts morning star. So they want you to think that it wasn't Lucifer that fell from heaven. No, it's the morning star, which is Jesus that fell from heaven, which is going down to the pit of the earth to be covered in worms and maggots. Yeah, real funny. Ha ha ha. Yeah, the complete Jewish Bible. The Messianic Bible. They're the ones that changed the Alpha and Omega to the Olive and Tav. And the Messianic congregations. You know, if they don't even know the difference between Lucifer and Jesus, you, you, go, you want to listen to those bunch of heretics? Not me. Not me. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright morning star and the spirit and the bride say come and let him that heareth say come and let him that is a thirst come and whosoever will let him take of the water of life freely. And I did a series on water. 
For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of the book, of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. Yeah, you want to add something not from God into the into the Bible? God's going to add to you the plagues in this book. And those plagues are bad news. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life. Hmm. Do you know your name could be erased from the book of life? People don't like to hear that. Baptist churches, oh, they, you know, do you know if I taught this in a Baptist church? I don't know, maybe nine times out of 10, maybe, maybe only eight out of 10. I'd be told to leave. Get out of here. You're teaching heresy. Why, once saved, always saved. Eternal security. Once you ask Jesus into your heart, nothing you can do can take your name out of the book of life. Yeah, they actually teach this stuff. But the Bible says, if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. Oh yeah, really? You think like John MacArthur? John MacArthur teaches once saved, always saved, eternal security. You could take the mark of the beast and you're going to be in heaven. That's not what my Bible says. And I think I'm going to believe Jesus in the Bible over John MacArthur. You want to take the mark of the beast? You go for it, buddy boy. Girly girl. But I, I'm, I'm going to pass on that. Verse 20. He which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so come Lord Jesus. Did Jesus come in 70 AD? Uh, I didn't see him. Did you? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Didn't know John was a southerner, huh? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. And by the way, I was born in Kentucky, so Kentucky was considered a southern state, so I'm not making fun of the south. Besides, that's where all the churches are, right? Boy, I tell you what, you go to the Bible Belt and there's a church on every corner almost. Sadly, they're, most of them are run by heretics, but uh, yeah. All right, let's go back to Enoch. 25 and verse 5. Uh, it shall then be given to the righteous and holy. Uh, well, let's, let's go back a little bit. Uh, verse 4. The earth via, uh, with goodness... And as for this fragrant tree, no mortal is permitted to touch it till the great judgment when he shall take vengeance on all and bring everything to its consummation forever. It shall then be given to the righteous and holy. Its fruit shall be for food to the elect. It shall be transplanted to the holy place, to the temple of the Lord, the eternal king. Then shall they rejoice with joy and be glad, and into the holy place shall they enter, and its fragrance shall be in their bones, and they shall live a long life on earth, such as thy fathers lived, and in their days shall no sorrow or plague or torment or calamity touch them. Then blessed I, the Lord God of glory, the eternal King, who hath prepared such things for the righteous, and hath created them and promised to give them. All right, let's uh, close this out on uh, Enoch 25. I think uh, I've covered enough for now. So, all right, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen.